So this is a description about the use of working memory and the relevance of working memory to both learning, teaching and especially performance. So what is working memory? Well simplistically, working memory is the number of items you can hold on to at any one moment in time. Think of it as a fixed box. In the 1950s, Miller suggested that that fixed box could cope with seven or it could be five or it might be as much as nine items of information at any one moment in time. I always thought this was a bit optimistic, but maybe they were just much cleverer in the 50s. More recent work by a fellow called Khan came up with a number four plus or minus one. But when you get stressed, your working memory shrinks. And when you get really stressed, I believe, or have this hypothesis, that you become a binary unit. You either do nothing, or you do something. The nothing is the typical rabbit in the headlights, while the something is the fixation error, which we usually see in examples like the Elaine Bromley effect. So this is your working memory, and it's fixed in size. Apparently, should you be lucky enough to meet a genie along the road, then ask them for a bigger working memory, because for most of us, there is no way of increasing it. However, you can change the way it functions. So let's look at a simple skill. Let's say spotting the sick patient. And the way that we're taught to spot a sick patient is using the A, B, C, D, E approach. As a medical student, what tends to happen is you probably get stuck around about B. Whereas for a more senior doctor, you can get through the whole of the alphabet all the way from A to Z. So how does that interact? So, on one side you've got your skill, let's say spotting the sick patient, and on the other side you've got the working memory, acting on your long-term memory, which is massive. But it obviously depends what you put in it. So as you can see from this diagram, the working memory is starting to act like a bit of a bottleneck. And in fact, that's what it's been called, the bottleneck of the mind. So what's the difference between an experienced and an inexperienced individual? Well, an inexperienced individual will have very little information in their long-term memory to improve the performance on the working memory. Additionally, the effect of stress on their performance is likely to decrease the functioning of that working memory and of the whole system. In contrast, an expert will have lots and lots of chunks of stuff called schemata in their long-term memory, which will enable them to make this process work more efficiently. Schemata is like muscle memory for the brain, the ability to do something without consciously thinking about it. So for example, when a senior doctor is looking at a sick patient, it's likely that that thinking process will only occupy a very small part of their working memory, leaving the rest of it to deal with more complex approaches to the management of such patients. So what's the relevance of this to learning and teaching? Well, the issue is, first of all, if you're trying to teach novices, if you overload their working memory with too much information, the so-called curse of the expert, it's likely they won't actually learn anything. So it's very important that the teacher concentrates on what is called the inflexible content or knowledge. So inflexible content is, if you like, the ultimate recipe for the functioning of whatever you're trying to learn. So if you were looking at your sick patient, the inflexible content would be A, B, C, D, E, and what those letters actually mean. So you would need to learn the A, B, C, D, E, and what those letters actually mean, until it becomes automatic. You develop automaticity. In the same way that if you want to be a good cricketer, you need to practice hitting the ball again, and again, and again, before you even think about moving on to a more complicated set of batting, for example, hitting it into the off covers or driving it down the leg side. One of the issues around the way that we learn is that there are a couple of blocks to learning that can make the function of the system even worse. And those are fear and ego. The problem is, if the learner thinks that he knows it already, something that is commonly seen in the medical profession, then the likelihood is that it will cause a block on the bottleneck. 
and the likelihood of them learning a skill or process from that is less. The other problem is that learners often confuse inflexible content with rote learning. Now, rote learning is learning without understanding. This is not the same as learning the absolute and ultimate components of your ingredients in order to ensure that you learn the process or skill properly. So to summarise, working memory acts as a bottleneck and depending on how you fill it or what you use in it, your learning and your teaching is optimised. The more stuff you've got in your long-term memory, the better that working memory functions. So it's very important for learners to ensure that the quality of what's in that long-term memory is appropriate and encourages important delivery and performance of that learning.